The rainbow jersey is the most coveted in our world of cycling. It gives you respect and recognition for an entire season. So each year the world's best riders compete for the honour of wearing it, but some of the world's best riders never actually get to. Coming up, the seven greatest cyclists of all time who've never won the UCI World Championships. Fabian Cancellara had two great passions and two great strengths when he was a pro rider, time trialling and classics. So as a time trial rider, he was pretty much unbeatable in his heyday. Spartacus won a total of four world championships in the time trial and two gold medals at the Olympic Games. And then as a classic specialist, he won the Tour of Flanders and Paris Bay on three occasions each. Now, somewhat surprisingly for a time trial specialist, he actually packed quite a mean sprint at the end of a race, particularly from a reduced group. All the attributes then that you need to win the world championships. However, Cancellara never even won a medal on the road side of the World Championships. In 2009 and 2011, he did come quite close to winning both the time trial and the road race at the Worlds, but he never quite managed to pull it off. Basically, there was just never the perfect course for Cancellara when he was at his best. There is absolutely no doubt that Maitre Jacques is one of the best Grand Tour riders of all time. Through his career, he won five Tours de France, two Giri d'Italia and one World Day Spagna. However, his prowess over three week races never really transferred over to one day races. In fact, he only ever won one monument, that being the 1966 Liège Baston Liège. So perhaps not a huge surprise that he never won the World Championships. He did go close on one of his 10 participations, also in 1966, but ended up beaten by a local favourite on the Nürburgring, Rudy Altig. However, apparently he was reasonably pleased with his second place finish because in third was his arch rival, Raymond Poulidor. It's quite common in cycling for the best Grand Tour riders to not focus too much on the World Championships, particularly in the modern era, which is becoming particularly specialised. However, the Spaniard Big Mig bucked that trend because he was constantly targeting those rainbow bands, but never quite managed to pull them on. His best year at the Worlds came in 1993, and already before the Worlds, he'd won the Giro d'Italia and the third of his five successive Tours de France. So he put himself in with a rare opportunity of taking cycling's triple crown. The only riders ever to have achieved that are Stephen Roach and Eddie Merckx. Now, Indrain did do very well up in a properly miserable day in Oslo in Norway because he won a reduced bunch kick ahead of the likes of Maurizio Fondriest and Johan Museo. However, unfortunately for Indrain, 19 seconds before he won that bunch kick, another rider, reasonably unknown at the time, had already crossed the line. His name? Lance Armstrong. Irishman Sean Kelly has one of the most interesting and varied palmares of any professional cyclist. So as a sprinter, he won the points classification at the Tour de France and at the Vuelta on four occasions each. As a classics rider, he won four out of cycling's five monuments with only the Tour of Flanders missing. But he was also a very strong GC rider. So he won Paris-Nice overall seven times in a row and also won the overall classification at the Vuelta a España. So you would expect then that he's another rider that should have won the World Championships in his career, but he fell short of the mark. His best results were two bronze medals. One of those came at the 1982 World Championships over in Goodwood here in the UK. Uh, there he was beaten in a three-up sprint by Giuseppe Saroni and also Greg LeMond. Uh, but Saroni's sprint was so impressive at the end of that that he was given the nickname La Fucilata di Goodwood, the gunshot of Goodwood which I think sounds better in English than it does in Italian. Although that might be my Italian. The best classics rider of all time? Uh, with Devlamink's record, he can certainly lay claim to that title. He, along with Tom Bonin, hold the record for the number of Paris-Roubaix victories. They've got four apiece. But Devlamink is also part of an exclusive club that have won all of cycling's monuments. Other riders on that list are Rick Van Looy and Eddie Merckx. So, with his pedigree in one-day races, you would have thought the World Championships would be right up Devlamink Street. Surprising then that he only competed at the World Championships on four occasions and that his best result in them was second. That came in 1975. He was a part of a group that also included Eddie Merckx, but unfortunately for him, Henny Kuiper of the Netherlands attacked and won by 17 seconds. De Vlamink won the sprint for second place, but was banging his bars in frustration as he crossed the line. 
We shall now turn our attention to a couple of riders who haven't won the World Championships yet, but could do so this year over in Innsbruck in Austria. The first of those is Anna van der Breggen. Now, the Dutch woman has pretty much dominated the women's side of the sport over the last few years, and her list of results really is quite incredible. She has won Flesch Wallon four times, Liege Baston Liege twice, the Giro Rosa twice, and she's the current Olympic Games champion too, but has never won the world yet. This year is a massive opportunity, one of the hardest courses that we have seen in decades, so it's got her name written on it really. Uh, she can win on her own or she could win from a small group, so two ways to go about it for her. Uh, it's basically hers to lose, we think, this year. And finally, we've got Alejandro Valverde, who is the nearly man of the World Championships. Taken part 11 times, come back with six medals, four of them bronze, two of them silver. None of them, of course, have been gold. In fact, no other rider in the history of the sport on the men's side have come home with that many medals from World Championships in the road race. Now, his issue often seems to be internal rivalries within the Spanish squad. So in 2012 and 2013, the race looked like Spain's to lose, and on both occasions, somehow, they did manage to lose it. This year though, not only does the core suit him down to the ground, not only is his form great, but also there doesn't seem to be another rider within the Spanish squad that will rival him as the sole team leader. So could this be his year? We will find out this coming Sunday. Right, that's all for this video. I hope you've liked it. If you have, give it the thumbs up. Uh, if you would like to see our full preview though, myself and Si talked all about the course in Innsbruck and all about the riders that might be winning the races there. And you can find that video just down here.